12 years into their marriage, my parents had given up hope of having a kid when suddenly I came along. I was their picture-perfect miracle baby with mom's auburn hair and dad's green eyes. People fawned over my looks, and my parents marveled over my brains as I crossed milestones faster than other kids my age. Except as I was growing older, my parents started noticing that I wasn't really like other kids. I didn't want to play with them and preferred to be alone. I was obsessed with taking apart machines and building Legos and puzzles. I couldn't move until I was done with something I'd started. Well, you could try to move me and then live to regret it. Once when I was five, my parents and I flew over to Paris for a holiday. On our first night, as mom unpacked my clothes, I noticed something was missing. Where are my purple socks? The ones with the dinosaurs? At home, I guess. But I packed other socks, sweetie. But they're not the purple ones. I want the purple socks with the dinosaurs. I drove my parents bonkers the whole night and the next day. I want my purple socks. I want my purple socks. Why are you looking at this ugly lady? I want my purple socks with the dinosaurs! I threw myself on the floor and screamed as everyone in the museum stared at us. And my parents carried me out. And that evening, we took a flight back to Florida. And I slept like a baby with my purple socks on. My parents thought I'd get better in school, but things just got worse. I didn't like sharing my things or having anyone touch them. And when other kids realized that, they only teased me more. But once in second grade, the teacher announced we were going to the zoo, and I lost it. It's not on the timetable. See? Where does it say trip to the zoo? We're supposed to have a math lesson. I'm not going. Everyone will stay here and we'll study math. I refused to move from my seat as everyone laughed. Why are you such a big baby? Go back to kindergarten. Grow up, weirdo. But my teacher said I didn't have to go to the zoo and called my parents in. Later that day, they took me to the doctor. And after a series of tests, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. What does that mean? It means that Evelyn processes information differently than other people. And changes are especially hard for her. But I can teach her ways to manage her emotions better. I wasn't entirely sure what the doctor meant, but I knew one thing. I wasn't like everybody else, and I just didn't fit in. Once in sixth grade, I was having lunch at my usual spot outside when I noticed an older boy bugging this new girl in my class, Alyssa. It looked like he was stealing her lunch money, and I couldn't just sit and watch. Hello, can you stop bothering Alyssa, please? Otherwise, I'll have to report you to the principal, and you'll get detention. Oh, I'm scared. I'm shaking in my boots. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you that much. Wait, is that a mole on your hand? Uh, yeah. What's it to you? I recently read about moles in a medical journal, and you should get that checked out by a doctor. Let me take a closer look. No, back off, loser. Please, I need to look at it. You could be really sick or dying. I'm just trying to help. Let me see it. I'm trying to save your life. Oh my god, you're mental. The boy ran off looking freaked out, and Alyssa was <laughs> laughing like crazy. That was hilarious. You're funny. What's your name? Evelyn? And I wasn't trying to be funny. Well, I think you're a hoot, Evelyn. And thanks for scaring my idiot brother off. Actually, I stole his lunch money, and he was just trying to get it back. Let's go get some donuts, shall we? And that's how I made my first friend ever. 